y'all. Welcome back to my channel. If you're new here, my name is Stephanie, and I appreciate y'all stopping by. Today, I will be showing y'all how I made these 15 fun, quick, and easy spring and Easter theme minis for my tiered tray. I know it's a bit late for a spring and Easter video, but most of these minis can be used all the way through spring and not just for Easter. I hope y'all enjoy the video, and if you do, please give it a thumbs up and be sure to hit that subscribe button if you haven't already. Let's go ahead and jump into DIY number one. For this project, I used this little tinsel covered basket that I picked up at Dollar Tree. I started by removing all the tinsel from the basket. I did go ahead and separate the two pieces of the basket and remove the glitter eggs as well as the tinsel from around the handle. Once I had all the tinsel removed, I snapped the two pieces of the basket back together. Next, I took a pair of wire cutters and cut off all the plastic tabs that the tinsel was wrapped around. I also went ahead and cut off the three longer tabs on the inside of the basket that the eggs were on. I used some of this larger jute cord from Hobby Lobby to cover the bottom half of the basket. I used hot glue along the bottom edge of the basket to secure the jute cord in place. I continued to apply hot glue and wrap the jute around the basket until the entire bottom half of the basket was covered with the jute. I do want to mention that I only used hot glue along the bottom edges of the basket and then just tightly wrapped the cord around the basket until I got to the place where the bow was snapped onto the basket near the top and then secured the end with more hot glue. I used two pieces of this cream colored cord from the hanging shelves from Dollar Tree to wrap the top of the basket and the handle. Again, I used hot glue to attach the cord to the basket and only used hot glue around the first strip of cord. Then I just wrapped it until I got everything covered and secured the end with hot glue. Here is how the basket looked once I had it completely wrapped with the jute and the cream cord. I did go ahead and wrap the cord around the inside edge of the basket for a nice clean and finished look. Next I took some of this jute trim with the leaves that I picked up on sale at Hobby Lobby and used hot glue to attach it around the basket one time along the seam where the jute cord and the cream color cord met. I also loosely wrapped it around the handle of the basket. I used three of these small craft eggs from Dollar Tree and mixed together some folk art paint in the color Pueblo and apple barrel paint in the color Territorial Beige to create this brown color that I thought looked like natural chicken eggs and gave the eggs three good coats. I took some brown craft paper and crumpled it up and placed it down inside the basket to fill it up so that I didn't have to use a lot of moss and so that the basket would have a bottom. Next, I took some of this reindeer moss from Dollar Tree and placed it down inside the basket on top of the craft paper, separating the larger pieces of moss so that it would look more natural. Then to finish this project, I nestled the three eggs down inside the moss and this one is done. I think this one turned out so cute and so farmhouse. This is going to be one of those pieces that I will continue to incorporate into my everyday farmhouse tiered tray. Moving right along to DIY number two. For this project, I used these two plaster bunnies that I picked up from Family Dollar. I started by using Waverly chalk paint in the color plaster and gave both bunnies two coats. Next, I used Waverly chalk paint in the color Snow White to paint the eyes and tails of both bunnies. I used Waverly chalk paint in the color ink and the end of a small paintbrush to create the pupils for the bunny's eyes. I dipped the end of the paintbrush into the ink paint and carefully dotted the center of each of the eyes. I then repeated this step to create the eyes on the second bunny. Next, I used Waverly chalk paint in the color ballet slipper to paint the nose and inside the ears on both bunnies. I used apple barrel paint in the color territorial beige to paint the centers of each of the flowers on both bunnies. I then used apple barrel paint in the color spring green to paint the leaves. I used folk art paint in the color seashell pink and apple barrel paint in the color lavender sachet to paint the flowers on the bunny that was sitting down. I used apple barrel paint in the color cloudless and apple barrel paint in the color pale daffodil to paint the flowers on the bunny that was standing up. I think these little bunnies turned out adorable. I love the little pops of spring color the flowers on the bunnies bring to my tiered tray. On to DIY number three. For this project, I used this little wooden basket that I had in my stash. 
I think these came three to a pack from Hobby Lobby, but I'm not 100% sure. I used Minwax wood stain in the color red oak to stain the entire basket. Next, I used one of these wooden tags from Hobby Lobby. I used Waverly chalk paint in the color plaster to paint the front and back of the wooden tag with two coats. I traced out the words Farm Fresh Carrots onto a piece of regular computer paper and colored the back side with a pencil so that I could transfer the words onto the tag. I then taped the piece of paper onto the front of the wooden tag. Once I had the paper taped to the tag, I took a pen with a sharp tip and traced over the words on the paper to transfer them to the tag. Here is how the tag looked once I had the words transferred. I used a fine tip black sharpie to fill in the letters. Here is how the tag looked once it was finished. I wrapped jute twine around the top of the basket three times using hot glue to secure it in place. After I had the jute wrapped around the basket three times, I placed the wood tag on the jute and continued wrapping the basket until I got back to the back and secured it with some hot glue and cut off the excess twine. I then adjusted the tag where I wanted it on the front of the basket and used a small dab of hot glue to hold it in place. Next, I took three of these larger carrots that I picked up on sale at Hobby Lobby and gently twisted the grass at the top to remove it from all the carrots. I used this greenery pick from Dollar Tree to create the carrot tops. I cut three pieces of the greenery at varying sizes and used hot glue to attach them to the top of the carrot where I had removed the original grass. I then repeated this step to add the tops to the other two carrots. Next, I took some reindeer moss from Dollar Tree and used it to fill up the basket, separating the larger pieces so that it looked more natural. Then to finish up this project, I placed the three carrots down inside the moss and this one is done. I love how this one turned out. It's perfect to fill up the larger empty space on the back of my tiered tray. Next up is DIY number four. For this project, I used one of these LED mini lanterns from Dollar Tree. I started by removing the metal ring on the top of the lantern and then popped out the bottom of the lantern using a little bit of gentle pressure. I then used Waverly chalk paint in the color plaster and painted the entire lantern, including the inside with two good coats. Once the lantern was completely dry, I placed the candle back in the bottom and popped it back onto the lantern. To make the bow, I used this burlap ribbon from Dollar Tree that has the little bunny prints in multiple colors, this burlap ribbon with gold edges also from the Dollar Tree, and finally this cream colored ribbon with cotton stems that I also picked up at the Dollar Tree. Now somehow I managed to lose the footage of making this bow, so I apologize, but here is how the little bow turned out. I did end up putting a dogwood bloom from a pick that I got at Walmart in the center using hot glue to secure it in place. I placed some hot glue on the top of the lantern where the ring was originally and placed the bow on top and this one is done. I really, really love how this little lantern turned out. It's super simple but looks so cute on the tiered tray. Moving on to DIY number five. For this super quick little project, I used two of these chick hopping toys from Dollar Tree. I took some wire cutters and cut off the wind-up knob on the side of the chick, getting as close to the body as possible without cutting any of the fluff. I then repeated this step to cut the wind-up knob off the other chick. Next, I took this acrylic paint from Hippie Crafter in the color yellow ochre and gave the beaks and feet of both chicks about three good coats. Look at how much of a difference was made just by changing the color of the beaks and the feet on these little chicks. I also wanted to show that I did go ahead and use a utility knife to cut the plastic off the bottom of the chick's feet so that it looked a little more realistic. I think these turned out absolutely adorable and with just a simple, quick, and subtle change in color, they look a lot more expensive and realistic. Moving quickly on to DIY number six. For this project, I used this Christmas book stack that I picked up on clearance for 25 cents at Walmart. First, I removed the jute twine and floral pick from the top of the book stack. I then used Waverly chalk paint in the color plaster and gave the entire book stack about three good coats. Next, I used Minwax wood stain in the color red oak and stained the middle book in the stack with one light coat and allowed it to fully dry. 
I then used Hippie Crafter acrylic paint in the color cold gray and painted the bottom book as well as the very bottom of the book stack. Once all the paint and stain was completely dry, I took a sanding sponge and distressed the edges of the books as well as between the books to make them look old and worn. I decided the bottom book was a bit too dark for spring, so I went back and painted it with apple barrel paint in the color cloudless and then distressed it with the sanding block. I used my Cricut to cut out the phrase, every path has its puddles, in a matte black vinyl and applied it to the right side of the book stack. I used some of this farmhouse ribbon with cotton stems and some of this burlap ribbon with lace, both from Dollar Tree, to decorate the left side of the book stack. I used hot glue to attach one end of the burlap ribbon to the bottom of the left side of the book stack and wrapped it over the top of the books, cut off the excess ribbon, and used hot glue to secure the end to the bottom of the book stack. I then repeated this step using the cotton stem ribbon, keeping it in the center of the burlap and lace ribbon, securing the ends on the front and back side of the book stack with hot glue. I used three dogwood blooms from a pick I got at Walmart to decorate the top of the book stack on the left side. I picked a large bloom and two smaller blooms and used hot glue to attach them to the ribbon on top. I placed the largest bloom in the middle and the two smaller blooms one on each side of the larger bloom. I decided I needed a little bit more color, so I took two cherry blossoms from a pick that I also got at Walmart and used hot glue to attach them to the sides of the large dogwood blossom, sort of in the front between the two smaller dogwood blooms. Then I took some jute and tied a simple shoestring bow and very carefully used the lighter to burn off all the twine fuzzies. I also used three of these small wooden beads that I picked up on Amazon. I threaded two of the beads onto one of the tails of the bow, tied a knot underneath the beads at what length I wanted the tail, and then cut off the excess twine. Next, I threaded the last bead onto the other bow tail, tied a knot underneath the bead, and cut off the excess twine. Then, to finish up this project, I used hot glue to attach the bow to the top of the book stack. Now, I did go back and use tiny dabs of hot glue to secure the beaded tails to the book stack so that they would stay in place. I just love how this little book stack turned out. I love the phrase and I think it's a great reminder. All right, let's move on to DIY number seven. For this project, I started with one of these 2.6 inch terracotta pots that I picked up at Hobby Lobby. I used Waverly chalk paint in the color plaster and painted the outside of the pot. Next, I took Minwax stain in the color red oak and gave the outside of the pot a light coat and wiped off all the excess and set it aside to fully dry. I love the way this pot turned out. I think it almost looks like a wooden flower pot. I also used one of these large 2.8 inch styrofoam balls from Dollar Tree. I placed the ball down inside the terracotta pot and I did not have to glue it in place since it fit nice and snug. Next, I took this all-purpose caulk and applied it around the top of the pot on the styrofoam ball just like I would if I were icing a cupcake. Once I had the entire top of the styrofoam covered with the caulking, I did go back and make sure there was no areas where the styrofoam was visible. Here is how the cupcake turned out once I had it iced. I also used one of these bunny bottom decor pieces from Dollar Tree. I carefully cut off the little bunny tail and both of the little bunny feet. While the caulking was still wet, I placed the little bunny tail on the top and then the two bunny feet on the side, letting the toes hang over the pot a little bit. I did not have to use hot glue to secure these pieces in place since the caulking will hold it nice and snug once it's completely dry. I then took one of these mini carrots from Hobby Lobby and gently twisted the greenery on top to remove it from the carrot. Next, I took some of the greenery from Dollar Tree that I used for the top of the larger carrots and cut off a few pieces and stuck them down in the top of the mini carrot. Then to finish this cupcake, I took the mini carrot and placed it on the back side of the cupcake and set it aside to dry overnight. Here's how the cupcake looked the next day. I think this turned out absolutely adorable and looks so cute on my tiered tray. Moving on to DIY number eight. For this project, I used two of these mini wood pallets from Dollar Tree. I started by taking one of the mini pallets and cutting off the very bottom piece using a miter box and handsaw to create a planter box. Next, I used hot glue to attach the planter box to the front of the other wood pallet at the bottom. 
Here's how the palette looked once I had the extra piece attached. I then used Waverly chalk paint in the color plaster and gave the palette two good coats. I used my Cricut to cut out this fresh flower market decal in a matte black vinyl and applied it to the palette. I cut the decal apart so that it was easier to apply. I placed the words fresh flower on the very top slide of the palette. I then placed the word market on the second slat in the middle, followed by the arrow on the third slat, and finally the words seeds and blooms on the fourth slat. Then to finish this project, I took some various greenery pieces that I had in my stash left over from other projects and arranged them inside the planter box using hot glue to hold them in place as needed. I am loving how this piece turned out. It was quick and easy to make and made great use of extra small floral pieces. Okay, moving right along to DIY number nine. For this project, I used one of these mini round plastic bowls from Dollar Tree and some flexible bailing wire. To make the handle of the teacup, I took a piece of the bailing wire and wrapped it halfway around a small bottle of chalk paint and cut off the excess wire using wire cutters. I used some wire pliers to continue to shape the piece of wire to look more like a cup handle and so that it would be easier to glue onto the bowl. Once I was happy with the shape of the handle, I wrapped the wire with some thicker jute cord using hot glue to secure it in place. Here is how the handle turned out. I did go ahead and carefully burn off all the fuzzies from the jute. Next, I used hot glue to attach the handle to the side of the bowl. Once that glue had time to set up, I did go back in with more hot glue around the top and bottom of the handle for a little added security. I used one of these wooden circles from Walmart for the plate of the teacup. I used Waverly chalk paint in the color truffle and painted the teacup and the plate with two good coats. After the paint was dry, I took some reindeer moss from Dollar Tree and used a pair of scissors to cut it into smaller pieces so that it would be easier to work with. Once I had the moss cut up, I used hot glue to attach it to the front and edges of the wood circle, making sure all the wood was completely covered. I did leave the bottom of the wood circle bare so that it would sit nice and flat. I highly recommend using finger protectors for this since the glue does ooze through the moss. I then repeated this step to completely cover the teacup inside and outside as well as the handle. I also did not cover the very bottom so that it would sit flat on the plate. Here is how the plate and teacup looked once I had them completely covered with the moss. To redefine the plate and teacup so that they actually resembled a plate and teacup, I took some scissors and trimmed up all the moss so that it was nice and neat and you could clearly see what the pieces are. I also made sure to pay close attention to the handle so that it was well defined. Once I was done trimming up both pieces, I did go back and add moss in any areas that you could still see brown paint. Here is how the teacup set turned out once I had the moss all trimmed up. To decorate the teacup a bit, I took some hot glue and applied a dab at the top of the cup and wrapped a piece of jute twine all the way around the top. I did decide to wrap it over the top of the handle instead of going through it. So I just added a dab of hot glue on either side of the handle so that it would hold the jute in place. Once I got back to the front of the teacup, I added another dab of hot glue to secure the end in place and cut off the excess twine. Next, I used the same jute twine and made a simple shoestring bow. I also used three of these small wooden beads from Amazon. I threaded one of the beads onto one of the tails of the bow and held it up to the teacup to decide how long I wanted the tail, then tied a knot right below the bead at the length I wanted it, and then cut off the excess twine. I repeated this step to add the other two beads to the other tail of the bow. I left the tail with the two beads a bit longer than the tail with the single bead to add a little bit of interest to this piece. I then used hot glue to attach the bow to the front of the teacup where the two ends of the twine was glued down. I also went back and added moss over the visible glue and I also decided to cut the piece of twine that went over the handle and remove it. Y'all, this is hands down one of my absolute favorite tiered tray DIYs that I've ever created. I just love it. It's giving total Alice in Wonderland tea party vibes. I know this one is really messy, but the way it turned out was so worth the mess. Moving on to DIY number 10. For this project, I used this small hexagon shaped wood shadow box from Michaels. 
I started by carefully removing the twine hanger from the back by using a flathead screwdriver to remove the staples. I then used a tiny Phillips head screwdriver to remove the sawtooth hanger from the back as well. I used Waverly chalk paint in the color plaster to paint just the inside of the shadow box. Now here you can see that I only painted the back, but I did go back and paint the inside edges as well. Next, I used Minwax stain in the color red oak to stain the outside and back of the shadow box. I used my Cricut to cut out the words Hello Spring in some matte black vinyl and applied it to the center of the shadow box. I then took a spool of jute cord and placed it in the center of the shadow box over the words and used a pencil to trace around the bottom of the jute so that I would have a circle around the words. Next, I took this jute trim with leaves from Hobby Lobby and used hot glue to attach it to the back of the shadow box using the circle I traced as a guide. Once I got back to the bottom of the circle, I cut off the excess trim and used hot glue to secure the end in place and this one is done. I think this one turned out super cute. Let's jump into DIY number 11. For this project, I used one of these mini wooden rolling pins from Hobby Lobby. I started by using Minwax wood stain in the color red oak to stain the center of the rolling pin. Next, I used Waverly chalk paint in the color plaster and gave the handles of the rolling pin two good coats. Then I used my Cricut to cut out a small bunny decal in some matte white vinyl and placed it on the right side of the rolling pin. To finish off this rolling pin, I took some jute cord and used hot glue to attach it to the left side of the rolling pin and wrapped it around three times and secured the end with more hot glue, then cut off the excess twine and this quick and easy DIY is finished. I am absolutely loving the combination of the red oak stain and the plaster chalk paint for spring this year. Okay, quickly moving on to DIY number 12. For this project, I used one of these rectangle wooden shadow boxes from Michaels. I started by removing the jute hanger as well as the sawtooth hanger from the back of the shadow box. I then used apple barrel paint in the color lavender sachet to paint the inside of the shadow box, including the inside edges. Next, once again, I used the Minwax stain in the color red oak to stain the outside and back of the shadow box. I went back to my Cricut and cut out this spring decal in a matte black vinyl and applied it to the inside of the shadow box, and this one is finished. I am also loving this color combination for spring, and I think this sign is a great reminder of how beautiful change can be. Let's move on to DIY number 13. For this project, I used this bunny hanging tag that I picked up at Dollar General. I started by removing the bunny tail and the jute hanger. Next, I removed the paper from the front and back of the bunny so that I had a clean slate to work on. Now, I lost some footage once again, but I used Waverly chalk paint in the color plaster and painted the front and back of the bunny with two good coats. I also used one of these Happy Easter wooden words from this pack that I got on sale at Hobby Lobby. I used Minwax wood stain in the color red oak and stained the front of the words as well as one of the tumbling tower blocks from Dollar Tree. Once everything was completely dry, I used hot glue to attach the wooden Happy Easter to the front of the bunny. Next, I made a simple shoestring bow out of some jute twine and used hot glue to attach it to the top of the bunny to cover up the hole where the hanger was and trimmed up the tails. I then used hot glue to attach the tumbling tower block to the bottom back side of the bunny so that it would stand up on its own. To finish off this project, I used hot glue to reattach the little tail to the bunny and that's it for this one. I really do love how this one turned out. Next up, DIY number 14. For this next super quick and easy sign, I used one of these four and a half by four and a half inch wooden planks from the Dollar Tree. I started by using Waverly chalk paint in the color plaster to paint the wooden plank and two of the tumbling tower blocks from Dollar Tree with one good coat. I then used my Cricut to cut out this decal that I created on Design Space in a matte light gray vinyl and applied it to the front of the wooden plank. To finish up this little sign, I applied some hot glue to one of the tumbling tower blocks and placed it on the back side of the sign at the bottom so that the sign would stand on its own. 
I then repeated this step to add the other tumbling tower block to the other side on the back, and that's it. I think this sign is super cute and perfect for spring. And last but not least, DIY number 15. For this project, I used three of these mini decorative eggs that I picked up at Dollar General. I started by using apple barrel paint in the color Toasted Marshmallow and gave the eggs three to four good coats. I also used one of these 16 ounce canning jars from the Family Dollar. I used Waverly chalk paint in the color ink and painted both parts of the canning jar lid with two good coats. Then I used one of these mini bird's nests from this two pack that I picked up at Hobby Lobby. I removed the nest from the package and then removed the wire from the center of the nest. Next, I used hot glue to attach the three eggs in the nest. I arranged the eggs so that they were all able to fit nice and snug down in the nest. To decorate the bottom of the terrarium, I used some of this moss from this moss collection from Hobby Lobby. I started by breaking apart and placing the moss that almost looks like tree bark in the bottom of the canning jar. Next, I added some of the lighter green moss on top of the bark looking moss. Finally, I added some of the light brown moss on top of the green moss and adjusted all the moss pieces until I was happy with the way it looked. Next, I went outside and grabbed a small twig from the yard and cut it down so that it would fit inside the jar and placed it in the back of the jar. Then I placed the bird's nest with the eggs inside the jar right in front of the twig. Here is how the inside of the terrarium turned out once I had everything in place. Next, I placed the lid back on the jar. Then to finish up this project, I took some jute twine and wrapped it around the top of the jar twice and used hot glue to secure the twine in place. I then cut off the excess twine and this one is done. This one has to be my second favorite from today's video. I love how this turned out and I think it is the perfect little touch of spring to add to a tiered tray or vignette. Here is the final reveal of all of today's spring theme minis displayed on my tiered tray. I absolutely love how all these minis came together to create a fun and festive display perfect for the spring season. Which one of these projects is your favorite? Let me know in the comments below. I actually have two favorites this time, the little moss covered teacup and the bird's nest terrarium. I want to thank each and every one of you for stopping by and if you enjoyed this video please give it a thumbs up, it really does help me out here on YouTube and if you haven't hit that subscribe button yet, what are you waiting for? Click that button and stick around for a little while. I have tons of fun projects on the way. I'll see y'all next time.